In this demo, we are going to um, we're going to look at some of the account policies. Now, I am on a domain controller, so whatever policy are applied on this server applies to all the members of of that domain. This is typically what it's seen on a uh, in an enterprise that have a Windows Active Directory. Uh, actually uh, Microsoft Active Directory, which is a, a tool to uh, manage user accounts. So if I go to uh, server manager, and then from server manager, we're gonna use the uh, Active Directory users and computers. So again, this tool is used to manage uh, users in uh, and, and computers in, um, in a network uh, where uses the uh, Microsoft Active Directory, all right? And uh, so what I'm gonna look at is a user. So let's take a look at this user one. If I double click on it, and specifically we're gonna be talking about the properties of the account tab right here. So here we have the user logon name, this is how the user would log on. Um, you know, using this is the email address would be then uh, the the username at and whatever the domain name is. This is the uh, the user uh, name pre Windows two thousand basically means this is the account that you the actual account that you use to log on to your Windows computer that is part of a domain. Um, most in most cases, this name and this are the same, but they don't have to be. Okay, so if you if a computer is joined to, uh, if if it's if if it's connected to uh, Microsoft Azure, uh, that's a little bit more complex. But if you use there's a tool called Active Direct uh, uh, AD Connect, where you can sync your uh, local accounts to uh, Microsoft Azure to sign in to sign in to Office 365, you would use the whole email address. But anyway, that's that's. Uh, not the case uh, in this um, in this situation. Uh, so that would that would be the account that you use to sign in. We uh, talked about the fact that you can limit the logon hours of a user. So if I click on logon hours, uh, by default, users can log on to the network uh, seven days a week, right, at any time of the day. Uh, but if you want to restrict this, so you could say, um, you could say, for example, that um, let's say that you want to say, okay, users can log on from uh, Monday, let's say Monday through uh, Friday from eight to five or eight to six or whatever, right? Then you can, you can basically, actually, it, it would be the, uh, the other way around. So it would be this. And then uh, what you would do here. So here basically mean the, the user will be completely denied to log on at any time. But what we need is, again, we want from Monday to Friday from, let's say it's eight to five, eight to six, depending on what it is that you want to do. And here we're going to say log on permitted. So the blue is the log on permitted. And actually, it will be displayed right here. It's Monday uh, through Friday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., for example. And then you would click OK. So again, what that means is that you that user on, on this, uh, when, when, when this user won, uh, tries to log into the network, this property will be looked at and I would not be able to log in with this user if it's outside those um, uh, permitted times over there. So that's one thing you could do. Uh, in reality, that is not very practical and it's not used very commonly in, in most environments. But again, it's one of those things that in, in, a, in a heavily... Uh, I would say security is, you know, environment that could be done. Another thing that you could do is, so remember that when a computer is, uh, 
for, from when a Windows computer is joined to a domain, uh, the user can log on from all computers. Any computer that is part of the domain, you could just log into that computer with your username and, and password, of course. But I could restrict that and I could say, well, you know, this user can only log, you know, log on to the network from this computer. So if you want to limit the computer or the computers from which a user can uh, log on to the network, this is how you would do that. Again, not very practical, but it helps a lot with security because then um, that means that um, if let's say a malicious user get hold of that username and password and they try to log into the network from any other computer other than the one that has been specified, then that person won't be able to do that. In the same token, it limits the ability of that user to do his or her work right from, from other computers. But it all depends on the, um, so those options are there. They're not very commonly used in most environments, but those are uh, options that you have. Um, if an account is um, is locked, then you need to you you click on unlock this account, and then that would unlock you know to unlock the account. Okay. So again, if you try, let's say you know more than uh, um, than um, the uh, the, the number of time that you are permitted with the wrong password, your account will be locked. And then in that case, you can unlock the computer through this. Other account options important that we are going to discuss is the user must change password and next logon. Uh, this is normally done when a user is hired into a company and they come in. The IT department will create a a common password, standard password that will be given to that user so that the user can sign in and then change his or her password. So, and, and that's what they do. They would click on this box, you come sign in and they say, hey, you know, you need to change your password. And then you change the password of your of your preference that obviously has to um, be aligned with the uh, password policy of the company. If you want to prevent the user from changing the password, then you would check this box. Again, in most environments, this is not practical because you do want the user to change the password. But let's say that there is a specific account that is used by several people, which is not recommended, but there are cases in which it is necessary. If there is a, a share account and it's used by several, several people, you may want to, so that the user cannot change the password because if it is used by, let's say, three different uh, users and one of them changes the password, the other one will not now, and then they won't be able to log into the system. Um, another option is the password never expires. Again, if you have a password policy where the account expires every 90 days or 180 days, you don't want to check that either, right? You do want the password to follow the uh, power policy and expire when uh, it is due. But again, depending on the case, that's uh, that's there. That's where you do that. And there are other options over here where like um, store the password using reversible encryption. That's for background compat compatibility and it's not used very commonly, very uh, useful. Uh, it's not often used. That's what I meant to say. Account is disabled. It does what it means, right? You could disable an account. So when somebody is let go, uh, it, whether because that person resigned or it was fired, then normally you don't delete the account right away because there are, there may be resources, files, and folders that are needed from that using. Uh, and you don't want to delete that account, right? So you normally what you do, you, you disable that. Now, let's say that uh, a woman goes on maternity leave, for example, for three, four months, and she's not going to be working from home. Well, it would be a good idea to disable that account so that um, uh, that, that account is not wide open, you know, uh, and, and those kind of things. It all depends on the policy. Every company has different policies when it re regarding to these things. Uh, if company uses smart card, like biometric authentication, this is where you would configure that. 
Um, there's all the features again for that that is not very commonly used and uh, for different specific scenarios that we're not even gonna go there. So that's about account options. Now, account expires, it does what it says. So you could, so let's say for example, that uh, you hire employees for three months to do a temp job, right? And so those employees will be in the company until, I don't know, September 27. Well, you can do this so that you don't have to remember to do anything with this password at the end of the day on Friday, September 27, then that password will, the not the password, the account itself will expire and therefore uh, the user won't be able to log on to, to that computer. So these are some of the um, most common things when it comes to account related uh, uh, features on a um, on the Windows Active Directory. Now, notice that there are a lot of other tabs, a lot of other things. So Active Directory, it's uh, sort of like a, a database, right? Where you can configure a number of things uh, for that use. For, but for this specific uh, demonstration, we are just interested in, in this um, account related options uh, when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to this. So, and then here is the account. If you right click on the account, uh, you can do a number of things. You could disable the account from here. You can reset the password from here, just in case that the the um, uh, the the password expire or you need to change the password for whatever reason. Um, you can delete the account from here if you wanted to. Uh, you could rename this account and then you can go to the properties of the account again this is where we wear. But so these are some of the features that are done uh, on on the on the back end. If you are a network administrator, um, then this is where you would come to configure those uh, those settings for an account.